Hello and God bless you. This is Cassandra Hill from Mount Sinai Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, presenting to you today the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, March 7, 2021. And we are reading from the Union Gospel Press Christian Life series. So glad today to be able to present the Sunday School lesson to you and I want to say God bless you to everyone who is watching, especially the members and friends of Mount Sinai Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church. We're so glad for another opportunity to come and present the lesson and uh, pray that everyone has had a blessed week and now uh, we're ready um, to start a brand new week and thank God for everyone that is watching. Before we um, go into our lesson today, we always want to pray and ask God to be with us because we know we need the Lord for everything that we do. So at this time, I'm asking that you would bow your head in a word of prayer with me. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to say that we thank you. Lord, we thank you because you've been so good to us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father God, in Jesus' name, we come in your presence asking that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight lord lord we ask that you would open up our understanding as we go to study your word and study this sunday school lesson we ask that you let your word be revealed in our hearts today O oh lord and father god we just uh, pray a prayer for everyone who is watching lord Whatever they may be in need of today, Lord, we ask that you just touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch the sick. Lord, heal and raise them up, Father. We ask that you will comfort, Lord, the bereaved, Lord. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would just be with us. And, Lord, we know that you're able to do whatever we need you to do, Lord. So we just thank you for it right now. We count it all done. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for our lesson today. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, this is the lesson for March the 7th, uh, which is the first Sunday of the spring quarter. We are, yes, started a new quarter last month. We were in uh, finishing up the winter quarter uh, in the book of John. Uh, but now we are in a new quarter and we will be studying the book of Romans in this quarter. And uh, we know that the book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul in uh, AD 56 to 58. And um, just to give a little bit of background on Paul, um, we know that Paul was of Jewish heritage, um, but he was also a Roman citizen. So Paul was his Roman name. And he went by that name as he began to minister uh, to the Gentiles. But um, he also had a Hebrew name, which was Saul. And in some of the um, earlier um, accounts of um, Paul, he's referred to as Saul. His from his Hebrew name. Um, and just to give a little uh, description of him, Paul described himself. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. And let me get that just to give you a little idea <laughs> of uh, how Paul had described himself. He said, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law blameless now that was his description that was is what he prided himself on uh before his conversion because in verse 7 it goes on to say but what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ so those he be found his identity in christ once he became a believer but um these other things that he, that he described himself by, those were the things that um, he had identified with earlier in his life. Um, now, we can see from this description, particularly uh, where uh, he says concerning zeal, persecuting the church, that Paul was not always a follower of Christ. Uh, in Acts chapter 7, 
um, we see that Saul was present at the stoning of uh, Stephen, Deacon Stephen, Deacon of the church. And um, going on to uh, chapter 8 in verse 1, it says that um, Saul was consenting of the of Stephen's death. In other words, he was well pleased with uh, Stephen's death. Um, and then it goes on in chapter 8, we see, uh, uh, matter of fact, verses 3 and 4, it says, As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. Uh, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So Saul was actively involved in the persecution of the church. It it. it it benefited the church because they were able to carry the gospel wherever they went. But still, we see that uh, Saul had a hand in that. Um, then if we go to Acts chapter 9, we see where he actually went to uh, the high priest uh, to receive permission to go to Damascus to further persecute the saints. Uh, any um, Jewish uh, believers that he found there... Um, you know, practicing um, um, Christianity or followers of Christ, he uh, asked for permission to bring them back uh, uh, to the um, Jewish court so that they could be prosecuted. So he was really out against the, the body of Christ. He hated the church. Amen. And on his way to Damascus is when uh, uh, Saul has this Damascus Road experience. Uh, many uh, may have be may be familiar with that. That's where um, Saul had an encounter with the Lord Himself. Amen. Uh, and you could read about that. All of that. That's in uh, chapter nine uh, of of the book of Acts. You could read about his um, his encounter with the Lord and the conversion that took place in his life, where uh, Saul went from a church hating. Uh, 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 prosecutor of the church to the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so that was quite a change that had taken place in his life. Oh, and then just a little bit more um, background I'll, I'll read from uh, the text um, relating to um, Paul and the book of Romans. It says, Paul penned 13 epistles which amount to about one-fourth of the New Testament page-wise. Add to this the information about him in Acts and Paul's life, ministry, and writings take up a sizable portion of God's Word. Romans is one of Paul's longest and most significant letters. The, this epistle is frequently quoted in lessons and sermons because it is rich in doctrine. Um, this letter, uh, the, excuse me, the letter to the Romans is considered by many to be the ultimate of Paul's epistles. An unusual point is that the letter was written to a church Paul did not start. He was planning to visit the church on his way to Spain. And it gives a reference to Romans 15, chapter 23 and 24, where he, where he um, mentioned his intention it was, uh, to come. Romans is the first of Paul's epistles in the New Testament, which might give the impression that it was the first to be written, but it is not. The arrangement of Paul's letters is more about length than date. At this time, Paul was on his third missionary journey. Concerning the origins of the church in Rome, we have few details. In all likelihood, the church was founded by Jews converted in Jerusalem on Pentecost. And we know that comes from the book of Acts chapter 2. The many greetings Paul sent members of the congregation indicates that he was personally acquainted with a number of them. Presumably, the number of believers in Rome was rather large, at least in terms of what may have been typical in New Testament times. Romans begins with several reasons 
why Paul desired to visit the church. And that takes us um, to the beginning of our lesson today, uh, which is entitled Paul's Desire to Visit Rome. The lesson text comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 8 through 17. Related scriptures are 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 24, Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. The time is AD 56 and the place is from Corinth. The golden text reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that comes from Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Now today's aim is to understand Paul's great desire to visit Rome. To understand that the gospel provides salvation to all peoples. And an application is to proclaim with confidence the good news of Jesus Christ. The lesson is broken into three sections. The first section is entitled Prayers Offered and it is covering verses 8 through 10. The second section is entitled Plans Anticipated. It covers verses 11 through 13. The third section is entitled Preaching Validated and it covers verses 14 through 17. We start our reading with our first section with verse number eight says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Okay. Um, our lesson starts off, uh, well, I want to take a step back to the, go into the uh, first uh, verse of Romans 1. It says, Paul, Paul is introducing himself, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. I wanted to read that because I, I thought that that was really interesting, the way that Paul introduced himself first he says as a servant of Jesus Christ um, and then he says called to be an apostle um, it, 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 uh, Paul presents himself first as a servant and truly um, th that's what we are we are servants of God before we have our titles before we have our roles or anything else, we are servants of God. And we are, you, God uses us and gives us gifts and callings to be used for his glory. And this is what Paul is making clear that he's not presenting himself as uh, just a big apostle, a great one, but he's presenting himself as a servant. And um, I, I saw a quote from the Benson commentary that says, when God, who, when God calls, he makes what he calls. So uh, Paul was called to be an apostle. He was made an apostle by the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He was not made an apostle by men. He was made an apostle by the one who called him, which was the Lord. So just that starting out um, in a humble manner, uh, even though we just read that, how much um, Paul had contributed to the writing of the New Testament, how much uh, it covers uh, his writing and about his life and the, the works that he um, did, uh, he still um, presented himself as a servant of Christ. Good example for us to take today. And then we go to uh, verse number eight. He says, uh, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. So he starts with thanksgiving to God for them. Um, 
he he's expressing his love for them by giving thanks to God. Isn't that a beautiful uh, 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 picture for us today? This is how we should feel about our Christian brothers and sisters. We should thank God for them. Uh, and we show our love for them by our gratitude that God has given us each other. Amen. Uh, and it, it reminds me of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8 that says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So he starts off with giving thanks, which is a, is a good example for us today. Uh, he said, I thank my God. Now, this is his personal faith, his personal hope, his personal love. My God. Amen. Uh, um, as, as we even discussed in last quarter, how important it is to make your own confession of faith amen so he's uh he's making his own confession he's making it personal uh, uh i thank my god through jesus christ for you all he's also letting us know that all of the blessings of the father come through jesus christ amen um, um i recall paul telling timothy that jesus is our mediator that all things come through him uh, um, and I, I also uh, remember that uh, Jesus let us know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father, but you have to come through Christ. Amen. So uh, th his thanksgiving for uh, them um, is through Christ. Amen. All things from God is through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. He says, uh, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. The faithfulness uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, in their Messiah, uh, and their perseverance and their growth, despite the challenges, um, uh, uh, was known throughout the whole empire, uh, which was really pretty vast. <laughs> Amen. Um, um, the one commentary rep referred to the, uh, that area as uh, or Rome as the metropolis of the world. And think about it. Their fame of faith was mentioned and spoken throughout the whole world, that whole region. Amen. Um, here I have something. Here it says that Rome uh, controlled vast territory from Persia to the east of Britain in the northwest. North Africa was also under their control, as was much of Western Europe. On a modern map, this represents many nations and uh, considerable territory. Roman citizens could travel freely throughout this empire, which means that spreading the gospel would not have been hindered by borders and visa regulations. To the contrary, the empire-wide system of excellence Roman roads facilitated travel and the ready dissemination of news. So they had their, uh, they had opportunity uh, for the news to be spread. And what good news it was that was being spread about the church in Rome, their, their perseverance and their faith. Um, you have to remember that Jewish believers in Rome had suffered um, uh, persecution under the Roman rule, uh, causing them to be uh, scattered. But they had returned back. And we even read from um, um, our, 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 our uh, uh, summary on Paul that he, other Jewish believers persecuted the church. Amen. Amen. So they had uh, persecution um, outside of their their race and they had persecution inside. Well, I, when I say race, I mean the original uh, believers were Jewish. But at this time, uh, the church was a mix. It was a mix of Jews and Gentiles. Um, yet they, they held fast to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't let uh, anything come in to infiltrate the gospel of Christ. Um, it's particularly uh, idolatry. It was, idolatry was rampant um, at, at that in that place in Rome. They had uh, so many gods for so many things, but they did not let that. They held firm to the faith in Christ Jesus, and, and um, 
it says, uh, 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 Paul uh, not only thanked God for them, but he says, for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Not only did he thank God for them, he prayed for them and he interceded for them. Isn't that wonderful? That's what we as believers, again, we ought to do that for one another. We ought to pray for each other and hold each other up. Amen. Amen. Um, he called on God as his witness. Amen. And this, this, he was being honest and sincere with here. He wasn't just saying words and I'm just, I'll, I'll pray for you. Um, no, but he was for real. He was sincere. He wasn't trying to sound religious. Amen. But he actually spent time in prayer for them. And he was consistent with his prayer. Amen. Amen. It, it, he said he made prayer without ceasing. It wasn't something he did one time and then forgot about them. No, he continually held them in prayer. And even though they were a flourishing church, uh, Paul realized that they still needed prayer. Amen. Now, this reminds us of the pastors and the leaders in the church. Now, they may be our pastors, they may be our leaders, but they still need our prayers. Amen. And we need to pray for one another. Amen. Amen. We need to lift each other up in prayer. And Paul was modeling this for us. As a leader, he was modeling um, this for us believers. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, making requests. If by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Amen. Included in his prayers was a request to come and visit the church in Rome. He had a great desire to see them in purpose if it be the will of God. Amen. Amen. He always um, put the will of God ahead of his desire. Uh, he had a strong desire to come, but... It would have to be by God's will. God will make the way for him to come. Amen. Okay, now another little reading here from my book says, As some of us have discovered, God may not answer our prayers in the way we expect. Paul would eventually make it to Rome, but not in the way he had expected. It would be several years before he arrived in the city. And that would happen as a result of a false accusation in Jerusalem. His subsequent arrest, several hearings, and his appeal to the emperor himself. All of that is in um, the book of Acts. We can read about that. Obviously, it was God's will for Paul to travel to Rome, but he would not get there in comfort or on his own schedule. Isn't that something? Sometimes we have a desire, amen, to do something, but we don't know how it's going to work out. He had a desire to go, but it, it the uh, text is reminding us that it wasn't a comfortable uh, uh, schedule for him to get there. He it, it, was, it was through some tribulation. Amen. We should not have or make the mistake of concluding that everything that happens in the world is God's will, unless by that we mean the permissive will of God. There are many reasons bad things happen. And we do not want to be guilty of blaming God for things the devil is behind. And it makes a reference to Job. Even so, God can and does use evil to accomplish good. And makes a reference to Romans 8 and 28. We know that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And are called according to its purpose. As we see in Paul's journey to Rome, even... As an apostle of Christ, Paul did not know what the future held for him. We don't always know what the future holds, but we pray and ask God and we um, walk in the will of God. And we know if we do so, God will work things out for our good. It may not always feel good, but at the end of it all, the end result, the big picture is going to work together for our good. So, but the main thing we get out of this section is Paul's love for the people, his desire to come and to see them. Um, but he was putting it in God's hands. 
as to how that was going to work out. But he definitely had a desire. And in the meantime, while he couldn't see them personally, he kept them lifted up in prayer. Now, isn't that something we can take from today? A lot of us have not seen our brothers and sisters uh, personally in some time because we haven't um, been able to come to church um, in the fullness, in the full group. We may have seen one or two um, or may have seen some, you know, and may have spoken to some, but not like in the worship service we're used to. But while we are apart from each other, one thing for sure, we can definitely continue to pray for one another, intercede for one another, and hold each other up like Paul did. Now that takes us to our next section, starting with verse number 11. It says, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brother, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I may have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, Paul has expressed a desire to come and visit. Now he's given a reason why he would like to come. Amen. It's not just to come for nothing. Amen. It says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. He wanted to come and to impart spiritual gifts to them through uh, laying on his hands or preaching or praying or maybe even some private consultations with, with some of the leaders or some of the other members in the, in the church uh, body. Um, this would aid in strengthening their roots in Christ. Uh, this is what he wanted to come. He wanted to come to help them to be established or strengthened, um, keeping them strong in this changeable and shaking world, especially well, the world we're in right now, we know how quickly things are changing. Seems like every day there's a new um, there's a new issue, a new drama, a new something going on in the world. But it was similar in that time. They were they were uh, facing a lot of persecution, and and like I said, the, the, I had mentioned that uh, they held fast to the teachings of Christ despite all of the idolatry that was around them. Um, that area had so many gods, gods uh, for everything, amen. Um, but they held fast and they didn't let their uh, um, their faith and foundation in the Lord be shaken. And they were growing rapidly. More and more people were coming in and no doubt they were bringing their own ideas and their own traditions. And Paul knew that they needed these spiritual gifts to help them to be grounded and rooted and to stay strong. Uh, this reminds me of um, the parable of the sower. Uh, when Jesus gave that parable in um, uh, Matthew chapter um, uh, 13, um, maybe don't want to read that right now because it's, it's a long passage, amen, but you could read that. But one of those grounds that the sower sowed in, um, it said that the, the, the seed sprung up. But because the, it didn't have any root, it was scorched by the sun. Amen. And, and uh, this is what uh, Paul wanted to do. He wanted to come and help root them because they were springing up. They were growing a, as a body. Uh, and he knew that they needed to have uh, deep roots in order for them to continue to be sustained and to not be removed by the, the parable mentioned uh, they were scorched by the sun but that's um, trials and persecutions uh, Paul knew that they needed some roots so they'd be able to stand and not be moved by the trials and the persecutions that would no doubt come their way um, so that's the reason why he wanted to come to help build them up. Amen. 
And that's that's the way we ought to be. Amen. We ought to want to see each other built up in the faith. Amen. Our roots to go deep in the Lord. So we're not shaken by every wind and doctrine, everything that comes up in the in the world. Uh, won't shake our faith. Amen. Uh, but you need to be rooted and established in order for this to be so. Um, 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 uh, he says that that is in verse number 12, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Um, not only would Paul come in there, strengthen them, but it would also strengthen him. It would strengthen him to use the gifts that God had given him to use. Amen. Um, there's a proverb that says, iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. Meaning that if, if you want to be sharpened, you have to stay around people that are sharpened. If you want to go deeper in the Lord, you need to spend time with people that are striving for the same. Amen. If you, if you uh, hang around with people that dull and they're going to dull you up. <laughs> Amen. They're going to pull you down. They're going to drain you. Amen. But you need someone that's, that's striving for the same thing that you are striving for. So um, by Paul being with them, it would strengthen his gifts. Amen. As he strengthened them, uh, it would strengthen him. God would enable, would continue to strengthen him. And uh, we are blessed when we bless others. Amen. So by him coming to bless them, he would himself be strengthened. Amen. Amen. I think everybody can understand that when you use your spiritual gift and you see that that a gift is blessing somebody that in turn it, it blesses you amen to want to go further in the lord and this is what paul is saying it's a mutual thing here i'm going to strengthen you but you also are going to strengthen me by me seeing you grow amen um it's going to be strength to me amen it's going to be encouragement to me as a, at him as an apostle he would be encouraged to go on and do greater work amen he says, now, brethren, in verse 13, now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. So Paul had planned to come. He In previous times, it wasn't that Paul, he wanted to know I wasn't um, being neglectful or, or, or um you know, not desirous to, to come and minister to you. I've been wanting to do this, but I've been held back from doing it. Uh, he wanted, um, or he'd been hindered in some way, amen, from being able to come, but it was definitely his desire to do so, amen. He wanted to come to minister and gain fruit, amen, either from new um, converts to Christ or maybe from strengthening the existing or and edifying the existing uh, believers. Amen. But uh, by him bringing new uh, converts into the church through the preaching of the gospel, uh, through prayer and, and laying of, on of hands, if that would help build up a, 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 a believer, that's giving him fruit to his account. Amen. Amen. And that's what we should strive for. We shouldn't be satisfied once we are saved and once we come into the knowledge of Christ, then just being satisfied, being saved, we ought to want to gain some fruit by helping to strengthen someone else, by helping to um, bring somebody else to Christ. You know, we say in church quite often as a benediction, uh, let every saved soul strive to save a soul. Amen. Once you've been saved, once you've been born again, now it's, it's your um it's your opportunity and it should be uh, um, your desire to see someone else be saved. Amen. Amen. You should be striving to, uh, to, to, to live a life that somebody may look at your life and say, I want that, what they have. And then that opens a door for you to tell them about the Lord. Amen. And then we can pray for our fellow believers. Amen. We're not supposed to be fighting and striving against each other because we are all on the same team. Amen. And that's the team of Christ. Amen. So this is what he was um, desirous to do. 
Amen. We see in this section he was desirous not to come just to put on the show and show out and just be, um, you know, the great apostle. No, he, he wanted to come to be a strength and a blessing to them. And in turn, it would be a blessing to him. Amen. And the body of Christ would be benefited and would grow with new converts and the uh, existing converts would be strengthened. Amen. So this is what his his um, desire and his plan to come visit them was all about. Okay, now that takes us to the next section, starting with verse 14, which says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in, in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen, amen, amen. All right now. Okay. Um, Paul said, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Um, because Paul, because God had saved Paul, amen, and called him to be an apostle to the Gentiles, amen, an apostle to everyone, but he, 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 he looked like he had a special mission for the Gentiles. He was indebted because of what God had done for him, because God had saved him and it had called him into this position, had called him on up higher, amen, he was indebted to preach the gospel to everyone, amen, amen, he, this was a debt that he owed, amen, 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 it, 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 Paul, this was not um, a play thing for Paul, this was serious, this was life and death, amen, he, he, he felt like I must preach the gospel because God is, um, brought me out where I was from a place where I was persecuting the church. I was going backwards instead of helping. I thought I was doing right. I, I thought I was keeping the law and just really pleasing in God. I thought I was, you know, one of God's best. Amen. Remember how he described himself in, in Philippians uh, 3 when we read that? He just, he just thought he was all that. Amen. But he was backwards because he was fighting against Christ himself. You know, when the Lord encountered him, he asked him, why persecutest thou me? He, he was persecuting Jesus himself. Amen. When he was persecuting the church, Jesus said, you persecuting me. And he didn't know it. He was backwards. But God changed his life. Amen. Opened his eyes. Because in that experience, uh, he, he really did go blind for a while. But not only did God open his physical eyes, he opened his spiritual eyes and allowed him to see. Amen. And because of this, now he's indebted. Amen. He's, I owe God my life. Amen. 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 Because God spared my life, didn't kill me. He gave me a chance. He saved me and he put me on the right path. Amen. So now he's indebted to preach the gospel to all mankind. Amen. Jew, Gentile alike, wise, unwise, he's indebted. Amen. Amen. And I was looking at the Matthew Henry commentary and made a statement that says, we should think of this when we covet great things from all our receiving put us in debt. Amen. We are but stewards of our Lord's goods. Amen. Amen. In other words, he's letting us know that we are just stewards. Amen. Amen. And we are indebted to God. Amen. It's not our goodness. Amen. But we owe the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we don't see um, anything that we're doing for God as a something for us to just get puffed up over. Amen. Amen. It's the grace of God that he uses anybody. Amen. Any of us human beings. Amen. Okay. Amen. Here's a little reading here. It says, uh, 
uh, in the uh, Greco-Roman world of Paul's day, those who did not know Greek were considered barbarians. Paul wanted to reach all people, both those in the cultural mainstream stream and those outside it. Moreover, the wise and the unwise needed to hear the gospel. In other words, Paul wanted to reach all people for Christ, whatever their race, culture, social standing, or educational level. While some evangelistic endeavors have a distinct target audience, Paul's goal was to reach all the lost. And this was quite, um, this was quite, uh, I say revolutionary because even the other apostles, they had tended to stay with other Jewish believers, amen, or, or reach for other Jews, amen. And the, it did say that the gospel comes to the Jew first. But um, the, the Lord had said that he wanted the gospel to go to the uttermost parts of the world. Amen. It wasn't supposed to stay at Jerusalem. It was supposed to go all, all over the world. And uh, a lot of the apostles, um, well, we even you know, know the story of Peter and the dream God had given him about eating the unclean uh, thing. That's in the book of Acts too. But that was because they did not want to venture into other uh, to, into the Gentiles. They want to stay with the Jewish and convert the Jews. Amen. But uh, Paul's uh, um, Paul's calling it was taking him not only to the Jews but to all people. Amen. All nationalities, races. So this is this is something um, that was revolutionary and that was quite different, and that for a time caused uh, controversy in the church. Uh, but they. They came to agreement that this was the will of God, um, that the gospel would be preached to all mankind. Um, but, but even today, when we look at our typical churches, our churches tend to um, look like one race or one group of people. And uh, that's changing some. We do see some congregations where uh, we have different nationalities. Uh, and, uh, but uh, in all of our cases, um, the, it, it's it's whatever you know it's a predominant denomin um, 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 race or, or creed or culture of people amen but the Lord wants us to reach out to all people uh, and, and and don't be um, afraid to, to to reach out so, to somebody that maybe don't look just like you amen because the gospel is for all people amen it, you know sometimes it's that way because uh, we live in a, 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 a society where there is segregation in neighborhoods and things. So sometimes your church looks like who's in, in your neighborhood. Amen. But the Lord wants us to be aware that the gospel is for all people and not to withhold reaching out to uh, people maybe that don't look like us. That's not our same race race and culture amen god wants to save them too amen maybe they sing a little different or, or maybe they're you know they sing more hymns and maybe another church you know that they have more of a beat to their songs that they worship and pray praise god with amen but the message must be the same and the message is jesus amen all right okay so um going on um um to the to the next uh, uh, verse here, in, uh, fifteen uh, says so as much as in me. Let's get me read that again. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are of at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. Okay, so we see that Paul was ready. Amen. He was, in spite of the persecution that uh, would take place, uh, that he would face for preaching the gospel, and, and he was ready. Amen. He didn't want it, nothing was going to keep him uh, uh, from preaching the gospel. Amen. He was willing to overcome whatever, any fears he may have had uh, to proclaim the gospel boldly. Amen. Um, and he says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power 
of God uh, to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God. That's what makes um, 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 uh, the gospel different from any other uh, religion or faith that may be out there is that it has the power of God back in it. Amen. Amen. I, and so many people have given a testimony of the change that have come forth in their lives. Amen. Once they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The change that was made in them. Amen. Amen. And that comes from the power of God. Amen. Unto salvation. Amen. It's not just uh, information that you're getting just reading these words, amen, but there's actual power behind it, amen, there's revelation and power behind opening up our eyes, causing us to see what we were not able to see before, amen, now here's a section here in the book, it says that as a bold proclaimer of the riches of God's grace, Paul was unashamed of both its message and his mission. If his mission had been based on false testimony or fables, he would have been a false witness to God's word and unworthy of his high calling. But because Paul knew the gospel was the true word of God, he would continue to preach it even at great risk to himself. Now, it says here, because Paul knew. You know, Paul was a living witness himself of what the power of God would do and what the power of God and the salvation would do because it made a change in his life. Amen. So he was a living witness of the power of God. Amen. It says, besides that, Paul knew that the gospel was powerful and would produce results. Again, because he was a living witness. The word translated power in Romans 1 and 16 is the Greek dynamis, for which we get words like dynamo and dynamite in English. The power of the gospel can save sinners from God's wrath and enable them to live holy lives. Amen, amen. This is what God's word will do for us. It's the power Amen. That that will enable us to live this life. Amen. Like I said, so many people testified how God just changed them. Amen. From alcoholic uh, and drugs and uh, promiscuity, all kind of lifestyle they were leaving, living. Amen. It was the power of God. Amen. Through the gospel that that word cleaned them up and made them a brand new creature. Amen. Amen. Now, it reminds me of the scripture in chapter uh, 15 of John, uh, uh, um, the apostle John, chapter 15. It says, and verse number three says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And as this was Jesus talking to his disciples about um um, the, the, the branch and how uh, the branch that bear not fruit he purged that that um, that 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 that, um, that that branch amen and he will do the same thing for us amen the Lord will uh, purge our lives of things that's not bringing forth fruit that's not profitable amen but it tells lets us know that we were clean through the word amen that that Jesus was spoken and this is his word amen the gospel is the word of God, and we're clean through the gospel. Amen. Amen. It says the truth contained in the simple gospel message that Christ died for our sins and arose the third day is sufficient to save the entire world. Amen. While preaching and hearing the gospel is necessary, the power of the gospel is only released through faith. Amen. 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 Um, I want to just uh, look right at that. Uh, okay. Uh, it says uh, it's the it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. You must believe. Amen. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. But it was talking about the faith. Amen. We we have to believe. Amen. In scripture, believing is not merely accepting certain facts about Christ 
Amen. Although those facts are true. Amen. Sinners must be willing to turn from sin in repentance and trust Christ for salvation. Amen. A life of obedience to Christ follows. Amen. The bottom line, we are saved by grace through faith. Amen. And we, you know, that's, um, it gives two scriptures here, Ephesians 2 and 8 and Titus 3 and 5. Amen. But that's so important. Amen. That these are not just merely words. You have to believe this. Amen. And you have to be willing. Amen. To repent of your sin. Amen. And accept what Jesus Christ did for you. That he died for you. You could not clean up yourself or, or save yourself. Amen. But the Lord did the work for you. Amen. Paul realized that the gospel must be preached to all people, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. By Greek, Paul meant Gentiles, not just people who were from Greece. Preaching to Jews first was understandable as they were God's chosen people with a privileged place in God's plan. Even Jesus focused on his own Jewish countrymen. Amen. It, you know, the Bible tells us that he came to his own and his own received him not. So um, he did come to them first. Still, it is clear from the Great Commission recorded by Matthew, Mark, and Luke that the disciples were to take the gospel to the whole world. Practically speaking, Paul reached out to Jewish people first during his missionary journeys. Arriving in a city, he sought out the Jewish synagogue. There he would find people who believed in one God, accepted the Old Testament as God's word, and were waiting, were awaiting the Messiah. Hence, the synagogue became the benchhead for the gospel. Only after his Jewish brethren largely rejected the message did Paul turn to the Gentiles, who were often very receptive. Amen. So he... Uh, he did come to his own. He obeyed the command of the Lord to go to the Jew first. Amen. But he didn't stop there because he also told him to take the gospel to the whole world. And that's what Paul did. And he was ready and willing to do that. Amen. 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 Okay. Now verse number 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Now, this is a um, scripture here that's taken from Habakkuk. Habakkuk uh, chapter 2. Uh, some may, uh, may be familiar with that. That's the scripture that talks about writing the vision, making it plain um, upon tables. But in um, verse number 4 of Habakkuk 2, it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. So this scripture was letting uh, people, uh, the people know that, uh, that, that, that there was some changes going to take place. That God was going to do some things for his people. Amen. But they had to be patient and they had to wait on it. Amen. But uh, those that were impatient and wouldn't, wouldn't wait on the Lord and wouldn't accept what the Lord was going to do. It says, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. They puffed up um, and think we can do things on our own effort. You know, a lot of people today say, no, you try to talk to them about the, the Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I'm good. You know, I'm good. I, you know, I don't need, but we can't um, get to God any other way, but through his son, Jesus. So we need the gospel. Amen. Amen. So that, that, that's the one that hit the soul was lifted up um, and, or those that are puffed up. Amen. But those that are just, we uh, shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. And, and God counted us to be um, righteous. Amen. Because we believe him. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Not because of what you did. You don't have to be perfect, amen, to come to the Lord, amen. But he will um, he will he will receive you um, and he will take away your sin, amen, just because you believe, amen. You believe on his son, 
Amen. You believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. What an exchange. Amen. 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 So it says the just shall live by his faith. Amen. Faith that God will bring his promises to pass. Faith that what Jesus did um, on the cross, amen, was for a payment, your ransom for your sin. His blood that was shed was for the remission of your sin. Amen. And if you believe that to the point that you are willing, like the lesson says, to repent of your sin and turn from your way, your evil ways, and follow Christ, then God will count that as righteousness for you. Amen. So the, it said the just shall live. Amen. Live and not die. Amen. Live and, and, and because he believes uh, he shall uh, receive eternal life. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. If we believe we shall receive. Amen. 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 Um, just one more little reading here. It says the righteousness of God in Romans is God's saving activity directed towards sinners who do not deserve it. Amen. We don't deserve it. Amen. It's by God's mercy and it's by God's grace. This righteousness is revealed from faith to faith, meaning that it begins with faith and ends with faith. It is by faith from first to last. Amen. Now, um, Look, if we believe, if we accept what Jesus has done for us by faith, amen, then that's the way our salvation is based on faith. We don't get to a point where we get good in and of ourselves, you know, and we have somehow earned our right to salvation. No, I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how many good works you have done. You're still saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And what Jesus has done and Jesus alone, not your works, not your good works, nothing for us to boast on, not my good works, I should say, nothing for me to boast on. I can't do enough good to deserve to be saved, amen. I can only receive what Christ has done. And this levels the playing field for all of us, amen. All of us can come to the Lord and receive what he has done for us. Amen. Amen. Isn't this a wonderful lesson? Amen. Now this is just the first lesson. Amen. Paul is laying the groundwork for the doctrine uh, of the church. Doctrine of faith. Uh, of, of righteousness. Of justification. Right standing. Amen. So we, we got a lot we're going to learn. Amen. In the book of Romans. Amen. This is a wonderful lesson. I hope that we've gotten something out of this lesson. Um, just seeing um, Paul's desire to come, not for himself, not for a show or anything, but for that because he loved the people of God, he wants to impart in them. He wants to see them strengthened and rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that nothing can come and um, shake them or, or sway them. Amen. And that's truly what we need today because there's so much going on in our world that could easily come and shake us. Amen. So we must be rooted and grounded and know what we believe and in who we believe. Amen. Amen. All right. Now that takes us to our practical points for the lesson. Amen. And practical point number one says strong faith is a gift from God and blesses the body of Christ. And that comes from Romans chapter 1 and verse 8. Number 2 says God's leaders ought to show concern for his people. And that's covering verses 9 and 10. Number 3 says Christians should provide support and comfort for one another through the love of Christ. That's coming from verses 11 and 13. Number 4 says we must be ready to share the gospel regardless of circumstances. Verses 14 and 15. Number five says we can boldly proclaim the gospel of Christ through his power. Verse 16. And number six says the righteousness of God is revealed to us through faith in him. And that's verse 17. Now here we have some questions for a research and discussion that we could take a look at. Amen. These are a good way to deepen your understanding of the lesson and cause you to think about the lesson in a little deeper manner.
So I always encourage you to at least take one of these questions and take a look at them, go a little deeper in our lesson. And then we have next week's lesson, which is God's wrath against mankind. And that lesson comes from Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 32. Our related scriptures are Psalm 19, verse 1 through 6. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 15 through 20, and Ephesians chapter 4, 17 and 18. Hey Amen. I hope that you have enjoyed the lesson today. It was such a wonderful lesson. Hey Amen. Just introducing us to uh, Paul and, Ro and the Roman church. Hey Amen. And his desire to come and visit them, amen. And even though he could not be with them at that this time, isn't it wonderful that he penned, amen, an epistle, amen, that they would receive, amen. Eventually he would come, maybe not in the way he wanted to come, though surely not in the way he really desired to come. But they still had his writings. They had his heart captured in these writings and most importantly they had the word of god they had the doctrine captured in these writings that they could read and, and they could grow and be strengthened thereby and we thank god for the word of god today that we can do the same we can take god's word we can read his word and we can be strengthened in our faith amen because we know that we need to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might amen Amen. So we have our lesson for next week. This is going to be a great quarter. We're going to learn a lot. Amen. I know I'm learning a lot already. Amen. And the quarter is just getting started. Amen. I, and I, I, I believe the best is yet to come. Amen. So um, you have your lesson for next week. Uh, do some studying ahead. Amen. And let's meet again next time for Sunday School. Amen. God bless you and have a blessed week.